Did you know that reading is one of the best ways to expand your vocabulary? And that's exactly what we'll do today. We'll read an interesting news article together. Welcome back to G-Force English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline, Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith Healing Relationship. I'm sure you recognize these two celebrities and I've talked about them on my YouTube channel before. Now let's talk about healing relationship. This is what we call short form and is often used in bullet points and news article headlines. This is when you want to be concise and you exclude necessary grammar. Now there are some words missing. We need the auxiliary verb are because this is the present continuous are healing. We need are because we have two people, they. They are healing relationship. We need a possessive. The possessive would be their relationship because the relationship belongs to them. So it's their relationship. Now, technically, the sentence is grammatically incorrect without this information, but we just call that short form, which, as I said, is very commonly used in newspaper headlines and bullet forms. But for you, you should always use all the necessary grammar when you're writing. Now, don't worry about taking these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF so you can look for the link in the description. Now, let's continue. Jada Pinkett Smith has said she and Will Smith are working very hard on their marriage. Now, notice here, because we're no longer in the headline, we're in the story, they are going to use full grammar. So you see the auxiliary verb are, and you see their marriage, just like we needed their relationship and our healing. So as soon as you get into the body of the article, they will use proper, correct grammar because it's no longer short form. They're working very hard on their marriage. So it's always important when you're reading to pay attention to the prepositions that you need to complete a sentence because often students use the incorrect preposition, but to a native speaker, it's very noticeable if you have the wrong preposition. So you work on something. I'm working on the report. And then you can add more information to describe how you're working. We're working very hard on our report, our proposal, our presentation, on our relationship, our marriage. After revealing last week that they separated in 2016. Okay, so only last week they revealed, they revealed. Let's talk about this verb. When you reveal something, usually information, it means that you make it public. So you announce it, you make it known. Now, public could be just to your family, just to your friends. It doesn't have to be to the entire world like the actors did in this case. So you make that information known, but previously that information was a secret. So they purposely didn't tell anyone that they were separated. But then they revealed last week that they separated in 2016, quite a long time ago. Now notice here, they separated. This is a verb, to separate. When you separate, it means you and your, your spouse, your husband, your wife, decide to no longer live together and you're considering whether or not you're going to get a divorce or try to reconcile. So that's the verb to separate. But notice, I think I said they revealed that they're separated because you can also use this in the to be form. So to be separated, you're describing your current state. Oh, I'm not married. I'm separated which means my husband and I no longer live together. 
which for me is not true. It was just an example, but for this couple, it is true. They have been living separately. Like I said, when you separate, that's kind of the word, right? To separate, you separate your lives, you live separately. They've been living separately. Now we know the time reference 2016. So I could add, do you know what I need to add? 2016, what word do I need here? They have been living separately 2016. Since 2016, hopefully you got that right because this is the present perfect continuous and we know our time reference. They have been living separately since 2016, she said, despite regularly appearing together. So they would be in public together. They're Photos would be on magazines, online. So you and I, as the general public, we would think that they're still together, they're married, they're happy because that's how they appeared. But in fact, in reality, they separated in 2016. So notice here, despite, notice the grammar because our verb is appear but you need it in the gerund form because despite is a preposition. So you need that gerund. Regularly is the adverb that describes how frequently they were appearing together. Regularly, it happened often. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. The couple made headlines last year when Will Smith stormed the stage at the Oscars and slapped host Chris Rock. Now I'm not going to explain what this means or discuss it because I have a full lesson on this exact topic. I included the link to that at the end. So I have one on that exact news headline. And then there's another one when they discuss it a few months after the incident. So there are two other articles you can review about Will Smith and this issue. So I won't discuss it now. So let's go on to this paragraph here. Speaking to NBC's Today Show, she said, the she being Jada Pink Pinkett Smith, Will Smith's wife, Jada, she said, we are working very hard at bringing our relationship together back to a life partnership. So they still have a relationship together now as their, their parents. So they have the relationship with their, their children. They still communicate with each other regularly. So they still have a relationship, but they want to bring their relationship back to a life partnership. So before their relationship was as life partners, now it's most likely their relationship together is more like friends, friends perhaps. So they want to take it from where they are now, friends and back to life partnership. And we're using back because this is what they previously had. So it's a little bit difficult because we have relationship together. Let me just put this. This is the thing, their relationship together. This is what they want to bring back to a life partnership. So I'll put that there, a life partnership. She explained, he can't be this perfect idealized husband. Let's talk about idealized. When you idealize something or someone, you think about that something or someone in a way that's better than the reality is. So we all have idealized ideas of what 
a relationship is, what a husband is, what a wife is, especially when we have so many romantic movies where the relationships are just perfect in these movies. But then in reality, it's very different. So we have an idealized version of what a relationship should be, is what she's saying. And I see this a lot with my students. I feel like a lot of my students idealize living in North America when it comes to being able to improve their English, not about the life in North America specifically, but a lot of students think that the only reason why they're not fluent is because they don't live in North America, an English speaking country. However, I have many students who have been in North America for 10, 15 years and still struggle with their English as much as someone not living in North America. So I feel like students outside of North America have this idealized version of how their English will improve as soon as they move to the United States. Now, notice there is a minor difference here in spelling. In North America, American English, we spell idealize with a Z, whereas in British English, they spell it with an S. There's no difference in pronunciation. And honestly, I didn't think this looked weird at all. So if you use the S or you use the Z, it does not matter. They're both correct and the pronunciation is exactly the same. I have to be able to accept him for the human he is. So she's saying in reality, he's not this perfect person, this perfect husband that you might expect from movies. He's a person. Now he has to accept me for the human I am. So she's saying the same thing about herself. And we want to love each other there. The there in this place, it's not overly clear what location she's talking about, but to me, I read this as there being a place where they understand that both of them are just people who have flaws. They're not perfect. Their relationship isn't a fairy tale romance. They're regular people with regular issues. That's the there, the location she wants to have the relationship because that's reality. When asked if the couple might live in the same house again, because remember, currently they're separated, to be separated. They separated the verb form. They separated in 2016, so now they are separated. When asked if the couple might live in the same house again, she agreed they might. Notice this very important word choice, might. Might is a modal verb. So just remember grammatically, you need the modal and then the base verb. So might live, might live. This is the base verb because there's no two in front of it. Might live. Now, as a modal verb, might represents probability, how likely something is to happen. When I hear might, in my mind, it's not very certain. There is about a 50% chance it will happen, but then there's equally a 50% chance that it won't happen. So if my friend said to me, oh, I might come to the party, that doesn't sound very certain. I most likely would not make plans with my friend. If I needed a ride to the party, I would not count on my friend if she said I might come to the party because that's only about 50%. That's not very high. If my friend had said I'll likely come to the party, well, then I would feel a lot more confident having my friend as my ride, my form of transportation, because likely is about 80%. Now, this isn't an exact science, but close to 80%, close to 50%. So the fact that she said they might, there's an equal a ch chance that they might not. On Wednesday, as part of a book launch, a book launch. When you launch a book, it means you introduce that book to the public 
for the first time. So to launch something, you can launch a business, you can launch a new project. But in this case, she launched a book. She made that book public for the very first time. But notice grammatically, we're not using this as a verb form. We're using this as a noun. And it's very common to use a launch as a noun as well. Let's review these two sentences. I launched my new book last week, which means I made my book available to the public for the first time last week. So this is the verb. I launched my new book last week, and that's why it's in the past simple form because of last week. Now, I could also say, hey, are you coming to my book launch? Now, in this case, all launch, this is the noun form, my book launch, this is either an event where you launch the book. So at this event, I make the book publicly available for the first time, or it's simply an event where we celebrate the launch of my book. So my book is already available, it's already been launched, and we're just celebrating the fact. Now, hopefully you don't say, I might come to your book launch because then there's only a 50% chance. So hopefully you say something like, I'll definitely come to your book launch. You can say, I'll definitely come to your book launch. And then if you want to make it sound even stronger, I remember this really great expression we have in English. You can say, I wouldn't miss it for the world. This is an expression. So you have to use all of these words just as they are. I wouldn't miss it for the world, which means 100% you're coming to my launch. It is extremely strong. So if I needed a ride from you, I would feel very confident if you said that. And then the it, you can replace that with whatever you want. I wouldn't miss your book launch. I wouldn't miss your wedding. I wouldn't miss your retirement party. I wouldn't miss your graduation ceremony for the world. And again, is just an expression to say how likely it is and you are 100% going to attend. Now thinking about how likely you are to watch my next YouTube video, my next Learn English with the News YouTube video, I hope you're thinking, Jennifer, I wouldn't miss it for the world, which means you are absolutely going to watch my next YouTube video. So put this in the comments, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Jennifer, I wouldn't miss it for the world. And then I'll feel very confident that you are going to watch my next video and it will motivate me <laughs> to make the video for you. So put that in the comments. Now let's continue. On Wednesday, as part of a book launch, she said she had considered a legal divorce, but could not go through with it because she was determined to work through it. Mm. So notice we have the past perfect because this is an event that happened before another event. So she had considered it in the past. But now let's talk about to go through, to go through with something and also to work through something. Because notice we both, we have two expressions with through, but they have different meanings. So let's talk about each of these. First, let's talk about to go through with something. This is when you do something and that something is always unpleasant or difficult and you do something unpleasant or difficult that you committed to. So you said you were going to do something like get a divorce. But in this case, which is obviously unpleasant and difficult, but in this case, I could not go through with it, which means that she didn't get divorced, even though previously she said she was going to get divorced, but she couldn't go through with it. So we often use this expression in the negative. And we often said, we often say, oh, I know I said I was going to quit my job, but I couldn't go through with it. I couldn't go through with it. So for thinking of Jada and Will, maybe they said, this is not true. They did not say this. It's just an example. But we agree to tell our kids about our separation, 
but we couldn't go through with it. We couldn't go through with it. So which means they didn't do it. Even though they committed to it, they didn't do it. Why? Because it was just so unpleasant and difficult to have to tell your kids that. So they couldn't go through with it. Even though this was just my example, it's not true. Okay, so she couldn't go through with it because she was determined to work through it. So now let's talk about to work through something. This is a positive expression because when you work through something, it means you find a solution to a problem. We commonly use this with relationships. So let's say your best friend came to you and said, my husband and I or my wife and I are having difficulties. You might say, oh, don't worry, you'll work through it. You'll work through it, which means you'll find a solution to that problem. Let's continue. She put the relationship breakdown. So the breakdown of the relationship, that's when the relationship started to become negative. It took a turn for the worse. It was no longer a loving, positive relationship. It was more negative than positive. The breakdown. So this is the noun form, the breakdown. Another word for that is simply deterioration. So you can say when the relationship started to become negative, that would be the relationship breakdown. She put the relationship breakdown to a lot of things. And by 2016, remember, this is when they separated in 2016. By 2016, they were exhausted with trying. So that's why they separated. They just didn't want to try anymore. And the relationship officially broke down. Previously, there had been speculation about the couple's marriage. So speculation is when people say things, they guess things, but they don't actually know if it's true. So the media probably said things like, Jada and Smith, Jada and Will Smith are not happy, but they're just speculating because they don't actually know if that's true. Maybe because they didn't see them together in public a lot. And maybe people started speculating that the marriage was in trouble, that the marriage was breaking down, deteriorating. Previously, there had been speculation about the couple's marriage in 2020 after the red, after the pair discussed on her Facebook show, Red Table Talk, that Pinkett Smith, Jada, had been in an entanglement with artist August Alsina. Entanglement, this seems to be a term that Jada created because it's not one I had heard before. The more common way of saying it is that she had been in a romantic relationship, which we refer to as an affair. When you're married and you have a ro romantic relationship with someone else, we call that an affair, an affair. So here's an example. We separated, the verb to separate, we separated because she had an affair or he had an affair. So you have an affair. An affair is just a romantic relationship when you're already with a romantic partner. The actors met in 1994. This is Will and Jada. Wow, that's a very long time ago. The actors met in 1994 when she auditioned for The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which if you don't know, this is the show that Will Smith became very popular from. It's a great show if you've never watched it. And it's old though, it's from the 90s. And later married in 1997. So that's how long the couple has been together, since 1997. It's a long time. The pair, of course, they mentioned it before and I didn't explain it, but pair means two. Another word that's commonly used, which I believe was already in this article I didn't explain either, is the couple, which means two. Pair is commonly used with a lot of clothing and accessories. For example, a pair of mittens, 
a pair of shoes, a pair of boots, things that come in two, I guess for your hands and feet, that's when they generally come in two. So I bought a pair of mittens and, and a pair of boots. So notice the pair part is singular because one pair. If you bought two pairs of boots, trick, not trick question, a real question, how many boots do you have? If you bought two pairs of boots, how many boots do you have? Well, hopefully that's easy for you. You have four boots. But if you bought a pair, one pair of mittens, how many mittens do you have? Two mittens, <laughs> just to help you learn that. Okay, so remember, pair is singular, but it can be plural because you can buy two pairs or three pairs or four pairs if you want. So the pair, more commonly referred to as the couple, but I do hear pair from time to time. The couple, the pair, have two children together, Jaden Smith and Willow Smith, along with Trey Smith, Smith's son, so in this case, the Smith is Will Smith's son from his first marriage. Ah, I didn't know Will Smith was married before, and I didn't know he had a child with another woman. You learn something new every day. And that's the end of our article. And I did share the two links to the previous Previous articles I've done on Will Smith, the Oscar slap, Chris Rock, and the whole situation. So this is available in the free lesson PDF. So make sure you download that. The link's in the description. I'll also leave these two links in the description as well. So that's the end of the article. What I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith Healing Relationship. Jada Pinkett Smith has said she and Will Smith are working very hard on their marriage after revealing last week that they separated in 2016. They have been living separately, she said, despite regularly appearing together. The couple made headlines last year when Will Smith stormed the stage at the Oscars and slapped host Chris Rock. Speaking to NBC's Today Show, she said, we are working very hard at bringing our relationship together back to a life partnership. She explained, he can't be this perfect idealized husband. I have to be able to accept him for the human he is. He has to accept me for the human I am. And we want to love each other there. When asked if the couple might live in the same house again, she agreed they might. On Wednesday, as part of a book launch, she said she had considered a legal divorce, but could not go through with it because she was determined to work through it. She put the relationship breakdown to a lot of things, and by 2016, they were exhausted with trying. Previously, there had been speculation about the couple's marriage in 2020 after the pair discussed on her Facebook show, Red Table Talk, that Pinkett Smith had been in an entanglement with artist August Alsina. The actress met in 1994 when she auditioned for The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and later married in 1997. The pair have two children together, Jaden Smith and Willow Smith, along with Trey Smith, Smith's son from his first marriage. Did you enjoy this article? Do you want me to make more lessons where we review news articles together? If you do, then put more news, more news, put more news in the comments. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And why don't you keep improving your English with Will Smith? Because I have another news article on him and you can watch it right now.